And Richard, you are the Group CEO and MD of Lightstorm. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Could you tell us a little bit more about Lightstorm as a platform and how all your partners benefit? We're a platform which which is designed to build the best fiber platform connecting the cloud across Asia and create a level of service on fiber across Asia and Middle East, which has not been built so far. Uh, we set out on the mission by going after the most difficult problems in markets like India and Indonesia, which incidentally hold the biggest potential to, to, to monetize, but is also the most the hardest problem in these areas. We're halfway in our mission. We have done good work in India. We are on our way in Indonesia, and we're, look, we're looking forward to, to creating more markets across Southeast Asia, hopefully Middle East, and then connect them all together into a platform which has never been built so far. And you say you're halfway into this project. How, how long have you been working on it, and, and do you have a kind of end, an end point in sight? Look like all startups, we forget to count time. But if you really look at calendar years, we've just been three years old. Our oh Indonesia goodness. operations is two years old. So, but we have come a long way and have a long way to go. We hope to be able to build this out completely in the next couple of years. This is an industry which moves fast. You need to be nimble and fast to execute, otherwise opportunities move on. And we think it's the best time in the best market that we could find ourselves. We're very proud of where we are right now. And it sounds like you've been growing at quite a rate if you're in all these different areas. Yeah, so we've been growing in several dimensions. We've been growing in terms of redefining spaces in the market that needs to be solved for, redefining the way we solve for the, that by questioning first order designs, redefining our customer interactions so that they can find value in doing businesses in newer ways as opposed to what they did with past providers. So in a sense, we are rediscovering a lot of things, hopefully creating value for our shareholders, for our customers, and for ourselves, our employees and our partners. That's where we are in the journey and hope to be able to just deepen it and move it forward as we go along. We reported in capacity uh, that AsiaNet, a division of Lightstorm Group, acquired all the fibre assets of the Indonesian company, MNC Play. Can you tell us a little bit more about that acquisition and, and what are the benef benefits to Lightstorm? Look, as a platform, we started by building Greenfield to test the thesis of what works. In Indonesia, we quickly figured out that the concept of shared fiber access infrastructure is good for the country, good for the market, and good for investors and employees. So we chanced upon an asset, which is the one which you mentioned, which had uh, hundreds of thousands of customers already connected and uh, was waiting to grow on the basis of new capital as well as shared usage. Uh, we struck a partnership, which I'm very proud of, with uh, Indosat Orido, which is a premier operator in Indonesia, and we decided to go after and buy this company out and create a shared usage of fiber infrastructure which already exists. And then we'll proceed to transform it, improve the quality, and provide great quality services which the market deserves and demands, and we hopefully can also create value out of it. So that's what the MNC Play acquisition is all about. As we speak, it's still been culminated, and we're, trying, we're working very hard every day to try and transform that services completely to a different degree of quality of service. And Lightstorm also acquired three submarine cables. Can you tell us a little bit more about that process? We recently announced a proposed an, uh, acquisition of what was known as RTI cables. Uh, it's still pending regulatory approvals, but we're in process to be able to drive that acquisition through in the coming uh, few quarters and month. What it does is creates a brand new in infrastructure which right now exists is operational and running, connecting Japan, US, Guam, and Australia. But hopefully we can transform that asset, not only to create better quality of service, what, what is already a great asset, but also then connect up that asset to terrestrial properties in Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and India in the future, so that we can create a seamless fabric of connectivity for the cloud as well as end users. So RTI acquisition is a step in that direction. Um, we are still passing through the acquisition process, but we hope to be able to conclude it very soon. And it's clear that you're investing quite heavily in Asia at the moment. What, what are the plans for the future? We believe in Asia in the sense that the biggest digital infrastructure and consumption patterns are going to emerge out of that market. Uh, the sheer demographic profile of Indonesia and India with millions of young people, almost the size of half of Europe together, 
thirsting for knowledge through digital usage is just unprecedented. We believe it's the next wave of usage hitting these, these countries. And now with pervasive AI, it takes the usage to a different level altogether. Our belief in that market, plus the fact that we believe that the cloud is really here to change these markets, uh, makes us believe that the underlying fiber infrastructure needs transformation. That's really our driving force behind investments in this region. We're prudent, we're frugal about what we do. The telecommunication industry has seen several ups and downs, and we're very aware of and cognizant of not to make the same mistakes others have. So we pick pockets where we can really create value which others haven't, even if it means deeper project and technical expertise, and then put capital, good, long, patient capital to drive those transformation. And that's really a journey that we are on. And the Middle East, does that feature in your plans for the future at all? We'd love to do Middle East. We have a deputed team to look into opportunities in Middle East. And Middle East has its own, every market has its own nuance, so does Middle East. We're trying to again find out within those nuance of opportunities where large operators like Etisala, Tu, uh, all these others do a fantastic job of what they've done so far. And what are the inef inefficiencies which a startup like us applying project, talent, and technology expertise with capital can actually create a difference? We're in the mission to find out that sweet spot and working closely with all our partners that I named to find out that sweet spot. Hopefully we'll find some, some, something to work upon very, uh, very soon. And you're obviously quite a, a relatively young company. How do you, how do you manage um, all those different areas? Because that, that's a lot, of, a lot of different places that you're, you're working in at this point. It's one of the most diverse markets in the planet. Uh, maybe about 1,500 languages affecting about 2 billion people and about, you know, multiple small countries. You know, the languages, tastes, cuisines changes every street that you go through. And so does the, 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 the way digital infrastructure is consumed or digital, uh, you know, offerings are consumed. We're cognizant about making sure that we solve problems for each of these pockets, but still find a common harmony of great quality of service and as well as ability to consume digital at ease with lower price affordability. Uh, we solve it in our own ways, throwing technology, but most importantly, throwing great talent at solving things in a different way than they have been solved so far. So that's our real plan in Asia, trying to you know, kind of probe into the perfect storm of great digital users, usage, great demographics, almost unabated growth, and somebody who can put in some patient capital great quality talent, and hopefully technology to make a difference in their lives. And what is your point of difference compared to others in the market? Do you think it is that talent? It's talent, but more importantly, we come with the belief that the telecommunications industry needs change. And the change has to be in, consistent with the change in the other parts of tech, like cloud, like IT. And we're trying to drive the change with respect to concepts like build to change as opposed to build to last about the, the concept of nimbleness, great talent, diverse talent, to be able to stitch together solutions which makes difference for our customers and eventually even the customer's customer. Uh, we're riding on the cusp of that change. Uh, we're hoping we can lead the way, not only because we want to make create value for shareholders, because we think the markets need it, the countries need it, and, and most importantly, the consumers deserve that. And I suppose because you are working in such an agile fashion, it means you're better equipped to answer the needs in comparison to, say, some, a far larger company? We're built to, be, to act like a small company. I mean, no doubt about, about that definition of what we do. We're built not to be a big company with bureaucracy, which has plagued the telecommunication industry for a while. But our scale of aspiration is indeed big. We want to create change and impact which really is meaningful, not so much big and at scale only, but also deep in its impact of what we do to the industry, to the shareholders, to the market and the ecosystem. So that's really our dream, to create the change company that this market deserves. So I know you said the company originated in India. Um, can you tell us more about what you've achieved there and also what are your plans for the future? So funnily, we started our operations in India because this was the most difficult market to solve for and was crying out need to elevate quality of fiber as well as quality of network services based on high quality of services. We solved it through first order imagination of redesigning everything starting up. 
For example, we designed fiber on top of high transmission wires and utility poles as opposed to going underground. We did di things differently by putting our software entirely on cloud and almost making it a cloud-bound company. Uh, as luck would have it, it coincided with a spurt of usage and end users because of the cloud and post-COVID offtake of digital services. And we actually ended up building a network today which is about 35,000 kilometers of Goodness. fiber. Extremely high reliability, almost data center-like. Nobody else actually offers that kind of quality. And consciously, we try and keep it limited to very high quality content and uh, over-the-top hyperscalers so that maximum value can be derived by our customers. We think we have done a pretty good job of it. We're still refining our models to make sure our, cup, our customers get transparency as well as visibility into the network like never before. We have opened up our network for customers to actually buy and source it themselves okay. through an automated tool on the screen, which nobody else has done before. Essentially, it's called network as a service. But to me, it's like buying networks like cloud is bought. Yeah. Our engineers have, have created a software which is very unique. Maybe one or two or three companies in the world really have built it, where you can spin up a service, cloud to cloud, network to network, in a matter of minutes and seconds. We think it's a great tool for enterprises to accelerate the, their journey into the cloud, many of whom are either hybrid, and some of them, of course, are born in the cloud. Our product fits the bill with respect to them scaling the cloud usage through this usage of this product, which is called Polari. And we're also launching the fungibility of a similar kind at the optical layer, which we should be able to launch very soon. In short, we're almost transforming the way enterprises bought networks. Okay. Uh, as opposed to calling up a rep to provision a circuit, they call up our website and provision a circuit and turn it on, turn it down in a matter of minutes. We're, we're very proud of our initial customer response since we launched it about six to eight months uh, back. And, uh, and we're waiting for C24 to deliver more, uh, as well as expand this product to other markets.